10. Warrandyte went into the penultimate round hosting North Ringwood at the WCG. Holland won an important toss on a quick surface and told his boys to chuck the pads on and not come back until 300 was on the board. President Ben Taylor clearly had other plans, allowing newly elevated Tyson Brent to have oh. an early look. Oh, bye, Benny. Brent spent more time putting the pads on than he did at the crease, however. Then Adam White stepped up when Holland needed it, producing a fine 92 before being run out. His 135 partnership with Lee Evans put the game back on even terms. It was then Dave Mooney and Campbell Holland who put their foot on North Ringwood's throat. Holland's 82 coming from one single shot. Planting his foot down the crease, swinging from his ass. Holland sent the ball to every corner. And Warrandyte scooted to 339 from their 80. North started well the following week. But Holland highlighted his case for his first DVP medal, grabbing five wickets and was literally on fire, delivering Warrandyte 172 run mauling. The seconds needed to keep their finals hopes alive with victory against the lower placed Warren Wood. The confidence was high after successive innings over 280. The pitch soon smelt like a barbecue after Tyson Rees burnt Justin Cleaves like last night's dinner. Dumb cricket from Daniel Wellesley and Stuart Haworth saw them back in the sheds and Warrandyte floundering at 4 for 65. Ryan Hoiberg and Stephen Goddard then went about ruining cricket, attempting to damage the game beyond repute. Hoiberg 7 off 106 balls, and Goddard's 27 off 86, a little bit bore everyone at the ground. And thanks to some late slapping from Luke Warren and Tom Ellis, Warrandyte posted 162 to defend. Warrandyte's hope of defending their total looked strong, however, when Warrenwood's seventh wicket fell at just 84, thanks to some fantastic fast bowling from Boo Dick Lincoln and Mitch Gaffney. Yet a stand by Warrenwood could not be broken, and the seconds fell three wickets short. Mathematically, still a chance, but not good news. The thirds went into the penultimate round, knowing they were in for a hell of a dogfight to avoid relegation, and put a horror season behind them. Hosting Warrenwood at Stinton's, Warrandyte were throwing the ball, and a determined Bloods outfit took to the ground. Wickets were soon falling quicker than female undies when J-Mac goes to daisies. Warrandyte had the opposition binned at 4 for 14, and soon dismissed for 92 in the 50th. John Brangley, the key destroyer, picking up two early wickets in the final one, destroying the stumps like he did the opposition's soul. Despite losing early wickets, Warrandyte opener Ben McMillan played a mature innings, guiding Warrandyte towards the total, despite regularly losing partners. Get the hose, my Barbary balls! Wipe my ass and lick my balls! It's simpler time, baby! <laughs> the opener was ultimately the last wicket, scoring 34, Warrandyte living to fight another day. The force faced a similar equation to the first, continued to win, and they could see some March action. Lose, and they were Gonski. Warrandyte asked the opposition to have a bat first, Despite taking early wickets, Warrandyte walked off the field at the end of the first day. On Turner South, 258 clearly meant Warrandyte would have to work. Wickets to Flash Gordon and Grant Hartman had pegged the opposition back, but a mighty run chase would be needed. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. With the season and possibly a medal on the line, Grant Hartman's 101 would surely be one of the finest he's batted for the club. Joined by Simon Bowyer for a 130 run stand. Bowyer fell four short of his own ton. But Brett Klein came to the crease. His 56 guided the Dite to a seven-wicket win and possibly some March Madness. Round 10.